All right, so we've got our Git Bash session started up here. And over here on the left, I've got a list of uh, my Windows Explorer, File Explorer up here so that we can go through and look at files on our computer because we're going to be navigating around our computer using this command line. And I want to compare that command, the command line commands that we're going to learn to what's happening on our operating system through File Explorer. And up here is where I'm going to make some notes that I'll make available in the place where I always make things available to my students. So you can copy the notes and have a reference to use if you need to go back and look anything up. So we've just installed Git for the first time. So the first thing we should do is there's a couple commands you should always do when you first install Git. Um, the first one is git config. We're going to type git config and we're going to type dash dash global. And we're going to set our username. This name is going to be used so that we can see uh, when, when we update some code in our files, if we're working with a team, uh, the username helps people see who actually made updates to the files and things like that. So inside quotes. So this says update the global setting for user.name and we're just going to put our name in here. So you put your name and I'll put my name. That's it. The second command we're going to do is configure our user's e our user email address. Um, so we'll do a git config dash dash global user dot email. And I will put my user uh, my email in here. I'm going to use Mr. Geiger at mrgeiger.com. You use your school email address is fine when you configure yours. All right, that's it. That's the end of those two settings. Um, so now let's start looking at our file system. By default, when git bash comes up, and I'm going to clear the screen. So there's a command called clear which clears the screen. That's not a git command. All git commands start with the word git. It's just an operating system command. And I'll just tab over on that. So clear clears the screen. We'll use that. Oops. We'll use that occasionally just to make our screen less cluttered down here. Um, the first command I am, the second command I guess I'm going to show you is ls. So when we type ls, that gives us a list of the files and directories, uh, folders, the files and folders in our current folder. Uh, we call folders directories. People who are used to using text editors and text based commands. Uh, tend to refer to them as directories and people who have grown up with Windows their whole life will talk about folders, right? But a directory and a folder are essentially the same thing. All right, so this lists the directories where I'm at right now. And where I'm at, this little tilde, that little squiggly s symbol right there, means that I'm in my home directory. How do you find your home directory in Windows? Well, go to your C drive. Go down to users, find your username, okay? And your username is your home directory, okay? So if you see here, 3D objects, app data, uh, actually, actually hidden, we might not see it, desktop, documents, downloads, and over here, I can see desktop, documents, downloads. So by default, when git bash start, the tilde tells us we are in this home directory. So ls, Um, lists, files, folders, subdirectories in our current location. So we use that to see what we, 
what's in here. So we want to make a new folder or a new directory inside our home directory to hold all of the repos for the projects we're going to work on. So to do that, I'm going to use a command called make directory, mkdir, and then we have to give it a name. I'll tab that out a little, another, give me some room. Mm -hmm. And this uh, makes a directory. I'll say slash folder with the name specified. It would be okay just to use the folder terminology instead of saying directory, but if you look at the command, make dir, make directory, um, and it's good to learn how to use an operating, uh, MS-DOS is, is it, actually, I think they might just ca call it DOS now, but it's MS-DOS commands to navigate around your computer using a console like this. So we're gonna make a directory to hold our repositories. So we're gonna say mkdir, and we have to give it a name, we'll call it repos, short for repositories. Everybody, when you start using Git, everybody calls their repository, you'll hear them talk about their repo. So we're gonna create a directory to hold all of our repos. Now when I ls, you over here, you probably saw it pop in, this directory, this folder popped in called repos. So I'm gonna ls uh, again. And then you can see over here, there's my directory repos. When it, list, when it listed all the files in that folder, I can see repos over here. So how do I get into my repos folder? I'm gonna use another command, cd, followed by a name, and that changes us to the specified directory. So when I say cd and I type the word repos, cd repos, now I'm inside that repos folder. So I am in this folder, which is empty. We haven't put anything in it. So I change directory to the repos directory. If I list it, ls, there's nothing in there. And you can see over here on this line, it tells us I'm in my home directory in the repos folder. There are screen. Okay. So we're in our repos folder. Now we're actually going to get to some git commands other than the two that we used. Um, actually, I'm going to put a note in here. Because before we did all these, don't forget we did these configuration commands. So these were officially our first two git commands. And we never really have to do those again. Unless you install it on a new computer, then you'll want to do those. All right, so let's make a repo. There are two ways to make a repo that we're going to talk about today. Git init would turn the folder that I'm in into a repository. Okay. And I don't want to do that. I don't, my repos folder is going to hold lots of different repos but I don't want my repos folder itself to be a repo. So I'm gonna use this other command, git init, followed by a name. Okay. So git init followed by a name. That will create a folder inside our current folder. So inside our repos folder, we'll create a folder and we'll turn that folder into our first repo. So I am going to make a folder called my web to hold my website files. All right, so here we go, git init my web. And it tells us it initialized a git repository in C colon users, my name, repos, myweb.git and if you look over here a myweb folder appeared let's 
cd to my web because we want to be working inside that folder. And we can see that it's empty. And if I, I'll do the same thing over here, I'll double click on it to go in that folder. And you see, I see a file there, but it's shaded. It, it's not full. You probably don't see it. Okay. So one thing I like to do up here on my view menu, there's an option for hidden items. I want to see hidden items. If I uncheck that, I don't see hidden items. So my web looks like it's empty, but there's actually some hidden files in there. So I click that box so I can see that .git folder. Okay. Now let me do it over here. If we do ls and use dash a, which dash followed by letters, sometimes called a switch, a stands for all. Show me all my files even if they're hidden. So ls-a, and now I can see that .git folder. So .git is a hidden folder, and that folder is where git is going to keep all the information about our project. And all the information, when we change files, it's going to keep information about the files and what we changed and when we changed it. And that hidden .git folder is what's created in the init process, and it's what allows us to go back in time using these git commands. So we've really only done two, one command right now. Other than our initial configuration, we initialized a new folder, which put this git folder inside it, and you can see there's a lot of stuff in there. We're not even going to worry about what's in there right now. Okay. Just know that this Git folder is managed for you by Git, and it's where it keeps all the information about the changes you've made to your project. Um, one of the other things I should show you, the dot dot here. Um, we're down in our My Web directory. What if we want to go back to our repos directory? We can't do CD repos because repos is above our current level where we're at. Okay, it says it doesn't exist. It's looking for repos inside my web. If we want to go up a level, so if we want to go from my web back to our repos folder, we use the dot dot. So cd space dot dot. And now you can see we're up in the repos folder. Back here. We should be able to see my web. If we do an ls, there's my web and cd my web puts us back in that folder. So we can navigate up and down through our folders using CD. Okay? And LS shows us the contents. LS-A shows us the contents, including anything that's hidden. And then we're going to stop there for this video. We've initialized our rep repository. In the next video, we'll talk about how to add files to our repository and make a snapshot. Let's take a little picture of how our files look at a moment in time. And then we'll keep working and later on if we need to, we can come back to that moment in time.